Um, but in order to complete the construction of rail, uh, clearly uh, what's going to have to happen is that the legislature is going to have to um, authorize the counties to be able to extend that surcharge. So that issue is presently before the state legislature and ultimately the, uh, the determination as to how much of the um, uh, rail project we'll be able to construct will we'll rest with the legislature in terms of whether or not they want to uh, allow the city and county of Honolulu to extend the surcharge. Well, what about the property tax, and how how does that fit into all of this? Well, uh, we have an ordinance in place that was adopted by the city council uh, a number of years ago, which prohibits the use of real property tax revenues uh, to cover the construction costs for rail. So uh, that prohibition is still in place. Uh, I have made clear, uh, as uh, the council chair, to uh, my former colleagues at the state legislature that um, uh, we do not want to tap into real property tax revenues to finance the construction costs for rail. Um, the concern of council members is the fact that uh, residents and businesses are having a tough enough time as it is uh, coping with high real estate costs. So generally speaking, the council has tried to hold the line in regards to any uh, real property uh, tax increases and uh, we will continue to do so uh, with respect to rail and other issues going forward. Now, the, I saw this new piece about ground, uh, the rail coming at Middle Street and then going to ground level. Is that a real proposition? No, I don't think so. Uh, you know, I, it's it's a it's it's an issue that was discussed previously uh, by by the council before I came on board at, at the time at a time when uh, the council needed to decide whether they wanted to proceed with a rail project uh, and if so, what uh, kind of project. And in the course of those discussions, um, the uh, the council did consider whether or not uh, a portion of uh, the rail line sh uh, should be at grade as opposed to a completely elevated system, which is what we have in place right now. So that decision was made by the council many years ago. Um, in addition, um, Hart has made very clear that uh, given the fact that the project has advanced, uh, has come along so far, that to, to change courses at this point uh, would be very costly and would result in substantial delays um, in terms of uh, the, the need to do uh, new uh, environmental impact statements or environmental assessments. Uh, there would be significant costs in, in regards to reconfiguring or, or changing the, uh, uh, the the design of the system. So, you know, I mean, it's been discussed, but I think at this point in time, it, it may be uh, very difficult to to change courses uh, in, in that regard. With all of the million dollar properties uh, in Kaka'ako and along the way, how are you going to run a trail through their view plane? Uh, well, uh, you know, that's uh, already been planned. You know, and uh, in terms of the environmental assessments, environmental impact statements that were, were done, um, you know, those kinds of issues were already considered. Um, but uh, the fact is that the, uh, the city uh, signed a full funding grant agreement with the FTA in which they agreed to, to build a 20-mile, uh, uh, 21 uh, station uh, system uh, that uh, basically uh, is the configuration that, uh, that we have funded and the legislature is considering funding in the future. So. Um, that is a part of the agreement, and um, but again, ultimately, the issue is the, the, the financing of it uh, rests with the legislature, and they need to decide that uh, before the end of the legislative session. Now, I have been out your area, and Hawaii, as a tourist destination, sells beauty. That rail is not beauty. It takes away from the beauty of Waipahu, those old towns, and that's what you're going to bring into the city? Well, that's ugly. Okay, okay. We've we've heard those kinds of criticisms, but you know, you look at the the, the drawbacks as some people view it, and then you look at the pluses. I can tell you for the people that I represent in uh, West Oahu and uh, the uh, leeward Oahu areas, the central Oahu areas, where uh, the motorists uh, have to deal with the worst traffic congestion on this island and really some of the worst congestion in, 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 in the country, that uh, many uh, support this system because they, they believe that it will uh, help to alleviate some of the, the, the congestion that we see on, the, on our roadways. and. Um, you know, we've been talking about uh, TOD and the fact that it creates 
potential opportunities for affordable housing development. Well, uh, as one, uh, as the council chair, and I, I believe I speak for the other council members, uh, if real is going to proceed, then we want to make sure that the developers along the rail lines will, in fact, deliver on affordable housing. So, those are some additional potential opportunities that we see uh, through the uh, construction of rail. Well, I'm just saying that the golden goose is tourism, and when you change the look of the beauty of this island is what we sell, how are you going to sell to tourists? Well, I think uh, many of the tourists are going to be uh, beneficiaries of the system. You know, um, other jurisdictions have indicated, have shown that, uh, you know, visitors uh, comprise a significant uh, ridership and, and they'll benefit from it. I think in regards to the current route, um, you know, for the most part it's going through existing uh, commercial uh, and business areas. And um, so again, the, the decision in regards to the alignment was made by the council a number of years ago. We have a full funding grant agreement that we, we've entered into with the FDA in discussions with the FDA. They've made very clear that they consider that to be a binding agreement. And um, I think in terms of being able to reverse courses now, I think that it, that would be very difficult. I'm just afraid we're killing the golden goose.